Welcome back to the CSIR International Convention Center in Pretoria. And of course, as you could hear there, the festive rhythmic sounds of Rhythm Africa. And that, of course, speaks to the occasion here today because it is a celebration of science. And we'll be speaking to various speakers, contributors here at the convention. And we'll also have a panel discussion later on with some of the ambassadors and also the Minister of Science and Technology. But for now, I'm joined by by uh, Dr. Flavia Schlegel, and she is Assistant Director General for Natural Sciences at UNESCO. So we're going to find out the role that the United Nations plays and how they are actually seeing all of these developments as they uh, bring nations together through the Forum of Science and, of course, science diplomacy. Well, uh, Dr. Flavia, thanks so much for speaking to us this morning. First and foremost, talking about cooperation. As uh, the UNESCO, you know, what is your take on this cooperation between nations through science? Well, UNESCO is investing in science because uh, science is a good means, a good tool uh, to promote peaceful and prosperous cooperation between nation states. For example, water. Uh, Namibia, Botswana, South Africa are sharing groundwater together. And UNESCO is working with the three countries to make sure that we have a peaceful management of this shared water body so that every country gets the water it needs uh, also in a sustainable manner. And of course, you know, when you talk about sustainability, the question of funding always comes up. So who is funding all of this cooperation and also the advancements? Well, there are different sources of funding. For example, it's the countries themselves, like uh, the Ministry for Science and Technology here in South Africa. You have uh, foundations, you have big funders, for example, like the European Commission. But you also have bilateral cooperation. For example, Switzerland in South Africa is funding programs uh, to promote innovation and entrepreneurship. And uh, the question uh, when people watch this and they hear of all these exciting developments, however, what is in it for South Africa? How would a country of, as South Africa have benefited thus far from all this cooperation? Well, I think South Africa has done a great job over the last 20, 30 years investing in science, technology, in innovation, to educating young people, to giving them the skill sets to be um, competitive on a national but also on a regional level both when it comes, for example, to health, to agriculture, but also to uh, new areas uh, like ICT or artificial intelligence. And of course, innovation also big, but as a continent, as Africa as a continent and South Africa in particular, how would you rate us? Where do we compare with the rest of the world when it comes to science innovation? Well, when you look at the UNESCO science report, uh, then you have uh, a few countries in Africa which are competitive internationally no matter what. So we have Kenya, we have Nigeria, we have Morocco and the real champion is your country is South Africa. Again, I think that uh, Nelson and Mandela decided very early on that investment in education and in science is absolutely crucial for development. The big uh, issue, I think, is really that there are gaps within the continents. So you have real champions like South Africa, but you have other countries which do still lag behind uh, when it comes to STEM education, for example, but also infrastructure like universities or laboratories where we really need a stronger investment in the whole science enterprise just to make sure that the whole continent is growing at the same pace. So given all the socio-economic, the psychosocial problems that uh, we generally face as a continent, um, uh, sometimes you would find that uh, things like funding for science and science development would lag and it, it would actually have to take a back seat to some of the more pressing issues. As UNESCO, is there anything that you are doing or could do to perhaps help in that regard? Well, I think it is really the question about setting priorities also for the African continent. On the other hand, there has to be a recognition that the African continent is a very rich continent in human potential, young people, but also in natural resources. And what science and technology can do, and this is where UNESCO is investing, is really to build a own African capacity to manage all these resources so that it is really Africa 
which is uh, creating the African new want for Africa, as it is also uh, promoted by the African Union with the strategy Africa 2063. And with regard to the support and funding that comes from the African Union, to what level is that? Well, I think it's a certainly an important funding, but we're also now, UNESCO is also talking to the African Development Bank. Uh, what type of investment are we really looking for? Is it investment in big infrastructure projects or is it really uh, investment in educating young people towards the knowledge uh, economy and society in ICT, in artificial intelligence? Also weighing the priorities between natural resources Resources, agriculture and the high-tech sector. Let's talk about artificial intelligence because uh, once again as a continent we are lagging behind but do you think that we could possibly catch up to where the rest of the world is and maybe not be directly there but at least get some way to catching up? Well, right now UNESCO is organizing a conference in Morocco on artificial intelligence for Africa. And again, let me reassure that there are pockets of excellence in Africa. I think the challenge is really to pull that talent and all this experience together and to really think as a continent and not just as a single state. I guess this is also uh, what we mean by science diplomacy, that uh, countries really share the knowledge uh, that countries which are a little bit more advanced to support, for example, other ones which are lagging behind. But let me assure you, and this is also shown by the data we have at UNESCO, that the potential is in Africa. It's really a question of investment, of setting the priorities. And I think also, and this is why I think a science forum like this one is also to create the curiosity and the love for science also among children. Well, Dr. Flavia Shane, well, thanks so much for speaking to us. And of course, this is what this forum is about. It is about a celebration of science and sharing of knowledge and interacting and conversating with other scientists from around the world in trying to move forward through science diplomacy. And uh, we will be speaking to Dr. Uh, Professor Mauro Gaka, and he is, of course, uh, from Italy. And he'll be telling us more about biotechnology and capacity building right after this.